Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mead here. Today is a viewer requested build. This is the um, video section is build I mentioned in the past where I said that if you wanted to feel more tanky, I have the build for you. It's a little atypical and I want to show you what we have. So the reason this build is atypical is we're still going strength, not dex. Dex would be a better build for to be more tanky, to be honest. However, we're going a monk level dip and it's the monk that I think you guys will approve of. We're going for scaled fist monk. The reason for this is, is the scaled fist monk uses charisma not wisdom for its extra armor because of that we are going to go for a cognitogen build what does that mean instead of the mutagen which buffs strength or dex or con or all three we're going for the one that buffs your mental stats so first let's look at the character i went human strength 16 dex and con of 12 16 for intelligence wisdom of seven that's so i can get that dex and con up and charisma of 16. yes the wisdom penalty sucks your will is going to be garbage We'll get one point into that just to level it up a little bit, so we'll help a little, but only a little. Will saves are going to be your bane in this build, just to be clear. But as far as a tank is concerned, that is not your concern. This is a teammate build. You have enough intelligence, as well as the fact that you're human, or half-orc if you went that route, that you get enough skills to actually level up things like perception and persuasion to 20. Hell, we're going to get trickery and say use magic device up to 20, and we will do so for trickery. Use magic device may not be necessary to take that high, but again, I can see the appeal. If you don't like that, go for something like Knowledge Arcana, or split it amongst them. Maybe go stealth, because again, you are a sneak attacker. That's part of your bread and butter. The reason for the high charisma is, again, and the strength is because we wanted to still be able to do power attack, corn against smash, dreadful carn, and shatter defenses combo. This is the one that literally allows you to set up your sneak attack damage after the very first hit. You just scare the shit out of guys, and then boom, they're flat-footed. Sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack all day long. Now when they become immune, you get bad guys that are just, you know, can't be created, they can't be sneak attack. And we will see some examples of this in the gameplay. Strength is going to be important. Power attack will be important. The ability to hit and hit hard with a two-handed weapon multiple times in a combat round thanks to flurry of blows will become important. This is why it all comes together where you're doing damage still, even without your sneak attack damage. So again, you're still fine. The only real concern, like I say, is your will saves and again we have spells we have spells that will protect us and buff us so there's plenty of ways for us to be protected still i'm not worried i don't think you can take this build solo to the end of the game i think you could try i think it'd be fun i don't think you would succeed but if you wanted that then that would be the dex space build and if you want dex space build in my opinion you'd probably be better off doing say the dex wisdom combo with the um uh, traditional monk instead of the skilled fist monk. Charisma is still important, and the reason that charisma is important is not just for our intimidation checks, thanks to our persuasion. Remember, if you're running solo, you have to do all the stuff yourself anyway, so trickery, persuasion, perception, it all falls to you. There's no teammates there to help you out. It all on your plate. But again, we are a little bit of everything, not a master of anything. We'll put a point in wisdom, four points in strength, and make sure our strength is really, really high. And of course, gear that both strength and of course charisma will be a priority to you anything else that busts you know strength dex and con intelligence wisdom and charisma is also a priority but charisma and strength is your bread and butter in my opinion now let's get into it first let me just show you the feats we picked remember as a monk you get a feat here and any other levels that you pick for these which we will not get so this very first one is important dodge why dodge because we don't have enough of a dex to get it otherwise up here but we don't have to meet the prerequisites down here, so that's to your benefit. So grab dodge here, then you can grab things like crane style, crane wing, crane repos as normal as you level up. Uh, weapon focus went for the quarter staff because I figured why not? I'm already be able to hit twice in a combat round thanks to me being a scaled fist monk. Might as well hit two times and hit more often than not. So again, weapon focus was necessary for other things like corner and smash and then uh, the dazzling display as you will see here in a moment. Now. We're going to take every other level, 19 more levels of vivisectionist to get all that lovely sneak attack damage. If you wanted an extra die of sneak attack damage, you can grab yourself a couple of sneak attack or say here. I would highly recommend you grab it sooner than later if you really want it. I don't. I think 10 is more than enough and 11 is really not that impressive. Early on, you'll really see it. 1 going to 2 or 2 going to 3 even. And even 3 to 4 is an impressive jump to your damage spiking. But... If you can't really guarantee that you can set it up, it's really not giving you a whole lot of love. And if you're tearing a team with you anyway, you don't really care so much. You're just there to do extra damage. Again, you build into it naturally, and I'm fine with that. But again, you do as you want. 
for vivisectionists, though, the reason we love it is it unlocks everything with Monk, so we literally have a green check mark and everything, and I will unlock everything just to be a jerk. Uh, as far as spells are concerned, don't worry about what you're grabbing because you're going to get them all anyway. It really isn't something that is of concern, in my opinion, because you can scribe them to your book. Uh, the only thing to really worry about is the ones that could potentially hurt you if you don't have someone to hurt. I want to get mobility to three because remember we're fighting defensively. I want to get trickery up as soon as possible because again I want to get all that XP for myself for unlocking all the traps and your decks ain't that good but we will have a solid trickery of 20 here and a huge huge number over here by the end of the build. Perception and Persuasion will go up to 20 each and then from there I can bring one other stat up to 20 like use magic devices a, a fine choice or uh, Arcana be that guy on the team that's just the smarty pants you are highly intelligent and as such why not capitalize on that so that's on you for what you want to level from there hell go stealth you are a stealthy character it's a solid solid choice uh, we are going to grab cognitive and this is where the build starts the ability to literally buff your charisma or if you want traditional monkey or wisdom this is the, the juice that does that uh, and again we will get not only cognitive gen, but we will even get greater cognitive gen and grand cognitive gen later on as appropriate from here make sure to grab things like power attack will always work towards your sneak attack potential which is power attack dazzling display shatter defenses corrigan smash and dreadful carnage those five feats are going to be important to you again from here it doesn't matter for spells so just grab what you think is important i'll point out anything that i think is damaging to you or dangerous to have uh, again i'll have one point in wisdom i don't care about it right now but strength is important to me Four in strength, one in wisdom, and that will be good for us. Keep going for per perception and trickery. Now again, I'm going to push up persuasion to get it caught up. Uh, from here, put your strike, sure, why not? Keep going. Keep leveling those ones up. Uh, remember, we need persuasion to six as soon as possible, and that's because of our corn against smash requirement, right? Uh, from here, it's what you feel. I know me, I know use magic device is going to be important, so I definitely want to put some love in there, and I probably want someone to work at least a little bit into Arcana. Uh, from here, uh, three to point out right off the bat. Infusion is the one that allows you to take your spells, I put in air quotes for you, uh, and cast them on anyone else. That's your team or bad guys, and that's important because there are some spells that are only for bad guys that if you don't have infusion, you are attacking yourself with that spell. That's dumb. I'll walk you away from those until you grab Infusion. We're not grabbing it now. Extend Potion is another fine example of one that you want for your medical discoveries. That's these guys down here. Uh, extend Potion is the one where take whatever potion you've chugged. If it has a duration to it, now the duration is double. If it one, only lasts for one round, now it's two. If it's one minute, it's two minutes. It seems kind of lame, right? Well, that's why we grab Enhanced Potion first. This is the one that literally turns it into your caster level as far as the sectionist levels are concerned which by the end of our build will be 19, not 20, because remember we did that one level of Monk Dip, but uh, 4 all the way up to 19 is a solid, solid increase to many potions. And again, you are going to be the potion guy. So this makes perfect sense, so does this, and so does Infusion. So those three can guarantee that I will grab somewhere in this build down here. Note, when we get to our advanced talents, it unlocks a world of fun shit. So again, we can prepare for stuff like that too. Uh, from here, uh, again, if it's something that has to do with Cornigan Smash, your dad's in display, uh, Cornigan Smash, your Shattered Defenses, which I don't think we have yet, no. um, you want to grab them as soon as possible. In this case, it's Dazzling Display. From here, I like to hide the other levels because that shows me that I've unlocked the newest level of spells, so I'm focused on level 2 stuff now. And again, it doesn't matter because, again, you're going to grab all these and scribe them to your book, right? But let's point you out some ones that are solid choices. Barkskin's the one I'm going to grab. Amazing. I can cast it on my teammates once I get an infusion, which we don't have yet. But I happily cast it on myself, and it's a long-lasting buff. Really, really nice armor for you. Again, we want to be tanky. Blur, all your physical buffs like Cast Grace, Bull Strength, Bears, Endurance is here. Um, cure spells, of course, delay poison. We are going to be immune to poison at level 11 for this build. But until that time, why not have the ability to walk through that uh, stinking cloud while they're puking their guts out? Your sneak attack beating the shit out of them. Your teammates will love you for this. Again, solid, solid choice. Uh, all the things to point out could it be things like protection from arrows is not a very common scroll to find, so I highly recommend that you pick this as one of your spell picks. 
so you don't have to worry about finding this as in scroll form to describe it into your book. Resist Energy, there's plenty of those out in the game. Hell, you can even buy them, so I'm not worried about that, but it's a solid pick, so it's Lesser Restoration. See, Viz, amazing early level spell to have. And again, once you get Infusion, you can cast that on teammates. So cast it on them or their pets. Now they can see stuff. They don't need blind fighting. So again, amazing buffs that we're going to have. That's going to be your shtick, so to speak. Keep going, Alchemist. Pushing those. Someone's blowing me up. I don't know why. Uh, I'm going to use Magic Device up a little more and more into Arcana. From here, let's grab that protection from arrows. Like I said, what's important? Going. Uh, I do want to have uh, at least one into athletics here so that I can get this up to a little bit higher. When this finally levels off at 20, this will be a solid plus 10. Not amazing, but I do like it that way. And I'm going to get Arcana up. I'm going to get, use Magic Device up to probably a plus 15 just because I know me. I like that. Uh, from here, now it's time to grab things like Infusion or Extend Potion. I recommend Infusion, because why not buff the team? You're taking them with you anyway, instead of having them be dead weight. Why not be able to cast things like um, Bark Skin on everybody? Poof, poof, poof. All of us are tough badasses. Let's go in and kick some ass. From here, I'm going to grab Pointing and Smash. It's even lit it up like a Christmas tree, so you know you got the thumbs up for it. As soon as I can grab that for you. I could have grabbed it here, to be honest. Uh, I could have grabbed it here by using a combat feed. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but I still maintain it's a solid choice. Uh, I'm going to grab some Viz because I know me. Now, just to show you how I could have grabbed it down here, this is a B. Oops. Maybe next level I can do that. Uh, I'm going to go Strength again, close up again, Trickery again, and kind of use that device. Uh, now we got level 3 stuff, so we hide the levels again. So this is our level 3 spells that we can choose. And again, with Infusion, I can turn someone on my team where they have Thorn Body. Notice, if you don't like Infusions, there are spells that you can still cast that are teammate friendly. Haste centers on you. Everyone around you gets the buff. Same with Delayed Poison Communal. It still works for Communal. Same with Protection from Arrows Communal. Anything that's Communal still works. You're still the center focus of it, so make sure the team is close to you and their pets before you activate it, and then poof, everyone gets whatever buff we're talking about. So you don't need infusion, I just like it. I, I still maintain it's a solid choice. But we have all kinds of other spells that we're going to really want to have for you and your team. Going. And get this one close to the point where it's done. Uh, from here, this is where I was talking about the combat trick, excuse me, combat trick I could have grabbed uh, corn against smash uh, you would have seen it in this list and it could have grabbed it here I believe yeah because level six that would have been level seven I would have had it high enough but again I was already picking this up at the same time so there's no need but I could have I'm gonna grab extend potion now however just to point out there are hidden stuff here so I'll get your hide on uh, available here off and see so, uh, confounding Blades could be something you're interested in. Know that I need slow reactions and advanced talents. Advanced talents is coming around the corner. So if I really want this as soon as possible, then I really need to grab slow reactions, which is this guy now. If that's not your thing, again, there's other stuff in here. Notice that Crippling Strike is going to unlock itself, and all we need is sneak attack damage, which I have, and that's the one I'm definitely grabbing. Dispelling attack, all you need is advanced talents. Again, that's coming around the corner. Feral Wings, if you had Feral Mutagen, which we're not going to do, that's this guy here. If you wanted to claw it up like Sabertooth, that would be your way of going that route. We're going to go for things like Greater Cognitogen and Grand Cognitogen. Those are just around the corner, but you need to be like level 12 and such to do stuff like that. But notice another fine example of one that's awesome. Mummification. You're immune to cold, paralysis, and sleep effects. That's amazing. But to do this, you need Preserve Organs and Alchemist level 10, which again is coming around the corner. So if you wanted that as soon as possible, then you need to pick up Preserve Organs now. I will grab this, I'm just not grabbing it now, and I'm not going to grab Mummification. It's just something that I just can't fit into the build, but if you want it, do it. Extend Potion, in my opinion, though, is still amazing, and especially when you combine it with the fact that you have Enhanced Potion. Remember, I'm casting potions as if they're level 8. So stuff that lasts for 1 minute per caster level, and normally caster level 1, let's say, so that's a 1 minute buff. I get it for 8. Well, now I get it for 16, baby, because Extend Potion. From here, Again, is Shattered Defenses available? It is. Grab it as soon as you can. From here, 
uh, other stuff just to point out to you. Remember, your remove blindness, remove disease. You're basically a pocket cleric. Um, displacement's amazing, though. I'll happily take that. Playing alchemist. What the hell, guys? Shut up. Um, use match device is now officially finished, and Arcana I can push that up to 20 if I so choose. Um, I'm gonna grab. Protection for now. Nah, grab haste. Again, doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab everything. Describe it to your book, you'll be happy. Now, we officially unlock level 10 stuff. Uh, I can start catching Arcana up. Um,. Now it's time. If we can't get anything that more into the Carnage and Smash, Dreadful Carnage combo, Dreadful Carnage doesn't show up until about 15 or so. Um, then we start working on our crane stuff. So you notice that we're missing out on crane wing. Time to start grabbing crane wing, crane repost. Now we've unlocked officially uh, Poison Immunity, awesome, and uh, Advanced Talents, which is awesome. And that allows us to do stuff like Crippling Strike, where every time I sneak attack somebody, they take a minus two to their strength. I can just sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack all day long, just lower their strength. Lowers their damage output, probably lowers their chance to hit me. And I say probably because if they're a strength based build, that's fine. If they're a dex based build, you know, weapon finesser, that doesn't do shit for me. But still, it's cool and I like it. Keep going. Uh, hide the other levels. This is your level 4 stuff. This is the one that I warned you about. So there's, like I said, spells that uh, are supposed to be bad guy effects. If you don't have infusion and you pick this spell and you cast this spell, you will cast it on yourself. Yes, you've just poisoned yourself with this disease that gives you massive penalty to con, steadily enemy, and that sucks. That's a, a dumb idea. Don't use it unless you have infusion, at which point then you can cast it on a target. Obviously, I suggest the bad guys, but again, that's on you. Um, notice there's other stuff in here that's on maze balls, and with infusion, I can death ward up my team. I can give someone echolocation. I can turn someone into an elemental. I can give freedom of movement greater and vis. All kinds of cool shit to my teammates. So again, on you for what to grab. But again, I'm going to scrap them all. Keep going. Uh, now I will unlock uh, that one point only in wisdom just because. And then the last two points will go into strength. Arcana's finally caught up now. And we'll keep pushing it all the way to 20. I'm going to take greater viz because why not be able to set yourself up with the uh, sneak attack early on. Now, what to invest in now? Again, I can push this one up, get it caught up, and get it to 20. That's on you. I do like uh, stealth as an option. I do like uh, making, because you are a smarty guy, right? The world is important to you, and again, intelligence is high, so why not push this up as well? Again, on you. But stealth is probably the most common one for me. Again, if you are going to sneak attack, just because you have greater invis and vis and vanish spells and potions, doesn't mean that you don't want to have an even higher stat number here. Remember, all that does is give you another plus 20. So this is 27 now for you when you cast that spell on you. And again, if we keep pushing stuff up, that can get be really, really high. So you're more likely than not to sneak up on targets, which is awesome. From here, uh, now it's greater cognitogen time. As soon as I can get it, it's level 12 of the sectionist, as you see here. Now this allows me to buff two stats, one at plus six, one at plus four. I recommend Charisma being the plus six. The highest one always should be Charisma, in my opinion. The plus four, I suggest Wisdom. Remember, Wisdom sucks for us right now. Why not give it a little bit of juice and get it into the positives? And this is a good way of doing that. So now your will saves are not as bad. Eventually, we'll get the one that gives us a buff to Charisma, Wisdom, and Intelligence. Charisma will be the most important, Wisdom will be the second most important, and Intelligence will be the third most important. So a plus eight, a plus six, and a plus four, respectively. And I'm cool with that. From here, uh, again, we look for our Corning and Smash. And again, I know it's not here. Uh, then if it's not that, then we're looking for our Crane stuff. So here's Crane Repost, the last one we needed to be a uh, true monk-style fighting guy. Uh, from here, uh, Freedom of Movement, fine. Going Alchemist. Pushing those ones up. And again, more stealth. Sure, why not? From here... Not much in the level 5 category, I must admit. But again, good stuff in here. Polymorph. Normally this is one that we cast on someone else, but we can cast it on ourselves. So again, I can do this to me, I can do it to anybody. Same with Beast Shape. Again, normally it's for me, hard to prepare for, but again, with me having infusion, I can cast it on the wizard who's out of spells. Uh, I can give spell resistance, highly recommended, to anyone on the team. That's an amazing buff. Here, uh, I'm gonna grab 
Prisoner of Organs. This is the one that you can grab three separate times, 25% each time. So 25% chance that even if they do crit or sneak attack, that they just ignore it. So one in four chance, or two in four, or three in four maximum. This is good enough for me. I, you know, I would love to grab more, but I'm not. And I'll take that one. Uh, from here, I'm going to grab... Dreadful Carnage, as soon as I can get it at level 15. From here, grab Elemental Body 2. Now remember, normally I hate this one. We use it when you run out of stuff, or if you're trying to solo a game, there's that one spot where if you have blood, it's a bad idea to have blood. Turn it into an elemental, you don't have blood. However, remember also, you are a monk. So again, the fact that you don't have armor, you have armor, you have high charisma. You chugged your cognitogen today, right? And again, you turn into this form, you've pre-buffed up with everything else because you can't cast spells in this form unless you have that mod. You're awesome now, and again, Bonus to my dexterity if I'm the fire version or the air version. I'm bonus to my strength if I'm the earth version. I'm bonus to my con if I'm the water version. Amazing, amazing abilities. And again, I can still monk it up just fine this way. So again, you're still fine in this form. Keep going. All the rest go into strength. Stealth is looking pretty good now. I'll take Stone Skin Communal, why not? And remind you, again, don't forget you have material components, diamond dust, uh, dinosaur bones will be important later too, so make sure to stock on all that stuff. Stealth is looking really good now. Uh, last two of these, and again, kind of what you feel, but there's a lot of good stuff in here. Grand Cognitogen, though, is the one that we want. This is the one that's a plus eight, a plus six, and a plus four. Now, again, charisma, wisdom, intelligence, respectively, in my opinion. You can mix and match and do as you want. You get all of them, so again, it's up to you. But that would be how I would normally buff up. From here, uh, really, we're done. I mean, it's whatever you want at this point. If you want Blind Fight, hey man, grab that shit. If you wanted uh, Combat Reflexes, that's their Combat Expertise. A solid choice if you need more uh, defense. Uh, you can go for what I suggest, Intimidate Prowess. Remember, you are a strength-based build still, and you're going to buff strength with spells and gear, right? So why not have your strength add to your Persuasion check when you're trying to scare off those bastards with your Corning and Smash, your Dreadful Carnage, and all that other cool shit that you're trying to do to set up Shattered Defenses. Solid, solid way of doing that. Uh, from here, level 6 stuff now. Notice that, again, True Sing's Amazing can cast it on anybody. Transformation normally is cast on you, but remember, you have Infusion. I can cast that on anybody. If I have a wizard that's out of spells, hey, buddy, guess what? Transform. Pick up a weapon. Go back to fighting. Kick some ass, buddy. Transformation solid. Legendary Proportions is solid. Amazing spell, matter of fact. Elemental Body 3. Drink. Again, you're going to get them all. Eye Bite is one of those that might be just like that um, Corrosive Touch one I was just warning you against. Could be one that is a, a dangerous one to have if you don't have Infusion. We do, so it doesn't matter. Feel free to grab it. Heal, I'm going to grab, and I'm going to tell you why. Not only is it an amazing spell, but remember, with Infusion, I can heal not only my teammates, but I can also damage Undead. With all those Cure spells that you have, you can target Undead, so long as you have Infusion. So I can technically use those spells to some decent effect. Killing Alchemist. Stealth is looking really, really nice. I'm going to take Legendary Proportions because I know it's awesome. This is one that, by the way, needs the Dragon Bone, the Dinosaur Bone, excuse me. Uh, so you really like that one. Really nice buffs. Uh, this one is um, bonus to Strength, bonus to Con, no bon uh, penalty to Dex like uh, an enlarged person is. Uh, bonus to your natural armor, adamantine resistance, your better melee weapon because you're a larger size category. It's easier to hit you, so there's that. But again, it's taken away by the fact you have more natural armor, so I'm cool with that. And you just beat the shit out of stuff in this form. And you can still cast spells in this form. It's just like a bigger version of an enlarged person. Keep going. Stealth is getting really amazing right now. Uh, from here, this is our last one, and again, if you really want a mummification, man, do that thing. Other uh, fine examples, slow reaction. As I said before, this is a really nice one. Uh, I didn't get it and the other one in time, so I could grab both of them, which is a shame, because it really would have been nice to grab confounding blades, but again, whatever. Um, if you don't feel that, fast stealth. Remember, you're not going to be invisible all the time, and stealthing moving slow kind of sucks. So fast stealth is a solid, solid choice. I do combat trick and grab something else important, like blind fight or whatever. Up to you. Uh, but, you know, mummification could be cool. 
and I didn't grab it on my bill, but you could make it the case for it, and I would probably agree with you. Hell, you could just as easily say, screw that, just go back to grabbing preserved organs again, so that you literally have 50% chance to avoid all sneak attack and crits. That's huge. That's a, a coin toss, or even if they make the crit, that you could just be immune to it. That's freaking awesome. But I do dig the fact that I'm immune to cold, paralysis, and sleep. Those are really useful things to be immune to. Just saying. And I could have some fun with a teammate that's casting cold spells where I'm standing here and, you know, tanking everything and grouping them up and they're just blasting cold, cold, cold in my direction where I could give a rat's ass. Just saying. Pretty solid choice. Uh, from here, again, kind of what you feel. There's plenty of stuff to pick from. Uh, you can just as easily convince me to get the one that buffs your persuasion some more and your perception, because why the hell not? Matter of fact, I'm fairly certain I did on my other build. Um, here I'll grab... Uh, dragon kind, because you know me, I like turning into a dragon, and I can turn you into a dragon now, thanks to my infusion ability. Last level, last point of strength, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, solid, solid stealth stat. Uh, and I'll take transformation goes what the hell. Now, just to show you what it can do with some reasonably decent gear, I have it uh, where I've tunneled down uh, far enough into the depths into this damn Tanaver steps to actually show you what this character is capable of. So first, here's my guy. He's taking a knee, but I still have my uh, dreadful, or my um, cognition still on, as you can see. Plus four to intelligence, plus six to wisdom, and the plus eight to charisma is the one that I particularly like. That doesn't mean you can't switch it when you need it. If you need a high intelligence stat to try to pass some skill check, man, drink the other one. You know, the one that gives a plus eight to intelligence instead of plus four. That's a two higher points higher over here. And again, that's on you. Just saying. Uh, notice that um, I don't have the necklace for armor. Why? Because I have things like bark skin I can cast on myself, and therefore I don't need the necklace for armor. This allows me to have an amulet of mighty, or whatever amulet I want. Amulet of mighty fist, though, plus one all the way up to plus five or six, means I can switch from a, a nice quarterstaff to bludgeoning damage with my fist and still not feel the pinch. And that's still pretty cool. Notice that I do have a comma. I would suggest you get a psi as well. Why? Because some stuff's going to be immune or resistant to bludgeoning damage. And that's your fist and that's your quarterstaff. So why not have something that is slashing damage or piercing damage? That's what commas and psi's are for. And again, you can still flurry of blows that shit. So just get the best magic versions of those and have one in, in a hand, one in a hand, and then go back to fists or go back to your quarterstaff. The quarterstaff's your bread and butter because of the huge damage spike you're going to get thanks to power attack and the high, high strength that you have. If it was an x base build, quarterstaff would be a stupid idea. You would want to do commas, fists, or size, and that's what you would stick with, and it would be weapon finessable shit that you'd be shooting for. That's fine, but I'm not doing that build. I'm doing the different one. And again, high charisma means high armor for me. As you can see, I have really decent armor, and I haven't really buffed up yet. I have, yes, I have uh, the cognitogen still on me. I have delayed poison effects still on me, which is a stupid idea because I'm immune to poison and I need to cast that. I have my crane style going and power attack on, always. And again, I don't have robes. I don't have braces of armor better than plus one right now. I could just as easily, though, chug like a uh, mage armor potion. Notice that my armor went up three points as a result of that. Notice how it lasts me a long ass time. Why? Because instead of it being a one hour buff per caster level for one caster level, that's what a normal potion does. I have extend potion and I have enhanced potion. So it's cast as level 19, not one, 19, and then doubles the duration as well. So instead of 19 hours of buff, I have 38 hours of buff, which is why it's so goddamn high over here. That's awesome. And again, if I'm the one that pours it into your throat, you get the benefit of all that extend potion, enhanced potion goodness. Same with things like bark skin, blur. You're going to be the potion hoarding some bitch. And again, that's pretty badass. So make sure you have all the potions handed to you. So when people need to be healed, you're the one that's pouring into their throat. Because remember, if I go to the info, you see this is a level 3 potion. Notice that it does 2d8 healing plus 1 per caster level. That's 3 normally for everybody else. But because of you and your enhanced potion, I'm considered level 19. Well, of course, the maximum is plus 10. So I'm giving you the plus 10. Everyone else will be getting a plus 3. So I'm giving you 7 more healing guaranteed if I'm the one that pours it from my hand into your mouth. That's why you're the potion guy. Things like uh, uh, cheap potions like uh, Mage Armor as well as Shield of Faith early on is going to be amazing for you and your team as you level up. I can give you a better bonus than most of the rings that people are wearing. Right now I have a plus one, 
I could swap out to a plus two, and that'd be amazing. But if I drank this, watch my armor go from 31 up to another three points. Boom. And that also works for my touch armor. And again, I can do that for you too. So just keep those potions stockpiled. When you find a vendor that can sell you 99 of them for 50 gold a piece, if you have the money, buy all 99. Buy the vendor out. And be the guy that's like, oh, time to buff here. I'm going to drink this, you drink this, you drink this. And everybody on your team is healed. Everyone on your team has armor. Everyone on your team has resist energies on. They have potions like bull strength or cat's grace on them. Protection from arrows on them. There's a shit ton of potions in this game. You are the master of that shit. And a team between this and the uh, scroll savant that'd be a one-two combo from hell this character like i've just made and then he has like a kid sister that comes along she's the scroll savant nothing but scroll savant one through twenty and she just hand her all the potions and you get or sorry hand her all the scrolls you get all the potions uh, and then just go to town everyone's buffed up she's using the scrolls to max effect you're using the potions to max effect and everyone's happy it's gonna be a cakewalk you will have so much fun let's show you the character in action um, give me a little bit of buffage besides mage armor obviously so we we'll use a shield spell notice that because of infusion i have to click me normally if you click it you automatically cast it on yourself because it's a personal effect it's not a personal effect anymore because you have infusion that's awesome uh, same with Expedition Retreat, cast it on me. Darkskin, cast that on me. Where I don't need it. Uh, I, I would do it, but I'm not going to do Full strength until I get a better belt, obviously. I don't need to lay poison on me because I'm immune to poison at level 11 in this build. Um, doesn't appear to be any kind of toxins or, sorry, uh, elemental damage, so I don't need to worry about resist energy right now. I'll do a heroism on my character. Oh, yeah, I'll do death ward on my character too. That's why I cut him off. Freedom of movement. Legendary proportions. Boom, that was amazing. That's one that just puts you into a different class of ass whoop. The amount of strength that you got just from that alone is awesome. And notice my bull strength uh, spell still works on me, or, or a belt of bull strength would still work on me so those stack and I could have a really really high I could have this four points higher to be a solid 32 easy peasy by the end of this game and that's a solid solid strength man really nice charisma and yes I have penalties to strength decks and con that's from the cognitive gen so again the belts that buff all three of these stats those are the stuff you want but there's a belt of strength and dex and con plus eight you're going for that there's a hat of intelligence wisdom and charisma plus eight you're going for that you're getting the best gear, you're the main guy of the team. Look at your stats. And I went a little crazy on this one for use magic device versus stealth. So again, switch it as you see fit. But I felt, what the hell? Why not be able to cast scrolls and wands? Boom, I have them all, and I can use them all. That's awesome. And I have ways to buff my stats besides. Look how high my persuasion is. Watch what happens when I go in and start beating on some bad guys. Find some. Remember, you're really good at trickery. You're the trickery guy, so you might as well get the free XP. So again, make sure to shut XP share off, so you'll be higher levels than everybody, even if you don't solo. Now, guys, up, and this is a perfect example to explain stuff to you. So now, notice I have a bunch of elementals coming my way. These guys are immune to crit damage, but I'm still doing really good damage. Why? Because I'm a higher weapon class, because I'm a bigger character, and the arch person does this, so it does a legendary proportion, which is what I've cast on myself. So notice my 1d6 quarter staff is doing 2d6 of damage, plus 26 more. Where is the 26 more coming from? Because of my strength, because of my power attack, and the fact that I have a two-handed weapon, I am shooting out a crap ton of extra damage. And again, it can be higher. This is not remotely as high as I can take it. So the fact that I'm still doing 30... Uh, five damage here on that swing maximum of 38 right now yeah, that's with nothing but a crit staff plus one that's pretty damn simple again, this is why i like this build this sneak attack is lovely when it kicks off and those numbers are lame in comparison to what my sneak attack can do when they're immune to sneak attack damage i'm still putting up numbers on the board that's why i like this build so again however you want to play it is different you know, feel free to switch it up as needed, but I still maintain that this is a solid, solid choice. Note, uh, let me give you somewhere real quick here to make sure I'm not missing anything. 
There's something here. Note um, the cognitive gin. Again, like I said, is a penalty to your strength, your dex, and your con because I'm buffing uh, all three of my mental stats, right? So, just the upstairs. Wrong direction. Um, because I'm buffing three mental stats, I penalize three physical stats, obviously. The strength matches with intelligence, dexterity matches with wisdom, and charisma matches with con. So by buffing those three, I'm, you can expect that I'm penalizing those three as well. Note... Like that. Um, the Cognitogen lasts for one hour per caster level at a certain point. I think that's like level 14 or 15 for us, so it's a really nice increase for us. Otherwise, it's 10 minutes per caster level. So this is lasting me into the next day and the day after that even, at 19. That's a long amount of hours to be buffed. That's awesome. So that means when I still have this buff on me, don't re-chug the potion. Why? I, I can still use two hours of buff, run through the dungeon, and have some fun. When it wears off, the problem is for Cognitogen, those penalties to Strength, Dex, and Con become permanent. You see a minus two to each of those things, and they'll show up in the, uh, looks like a little hexagon shape. There'll be three of them uh, on this little pop-up menu that you're seeing here. Once that wears off, and that's to show you that your strength is at a minus two, your dex is at a minus two, and your con is at a minus two. Again, if I rechuck the cognitogen, this guy right here, then I get all my buffs back for my wisdom, my intelligence, my charisma, and then I take, again, another minus two to strength, dex, and con. That's a no-no. Now I'm at minus four, not minus two. Well, how do you solve that problem? Well, this is why cognitogen, cognitogen builds like this suck. So you need to have less restoration. Fortunately, we have um, less of restoration as one of our spells. Uh, we even have restoration as one of our spells. We even have heal, which we pick it, but as one of our spells. So again, you'll have the ability to remove them. Just make sure you slot them up so you have them waiting for you. Uh, alternatively, you could just as easily say, well, just stockpile on lesser restoration potions. Remember, you are the potion guy. You're not going to be using these things unless you need to, and you're the dude that's pouring it in everyone's throat. So you probably have these in your pack. Feel free to just use them as you need. So just chug them to remove the minus two. Notice I can't remove them right now. It's not a permanent penalty yet. When I take a knee, and that's why I'm here to show you, when I take a knee, notice that my buff is only for another two hours and 35 minutes. I take that knee, I get all my spells back, and my cognitogen back and blah 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 but the effect will wear off because it's like an eight hour rest right this will be where you see the uh, hex mark like i said uh, hex shape for con for dex and for strength so if you go to your character sheet you see that they're still at the minus two the minus two and the minus two but now they're the permanent versions so permanent until you debuff them with things like lesser restoration takes a while. Poof, strength is gone. So now strength is back to being quote unquote normal. And of course I do have a giant strength belt right now. Um, I could use this one. I only one, that was kind of a bad roll. Con's better. Dex back to normal. So that's what you would do. You get yourself back to normal and then you chuck your potion. Okay? And then you back up and again, back down again. <laughs> Minus two, minus two, minus two, but it's not minus four, minus four, minus four. That's the point, because that would straight up suck. And again, you can pre-buff up with all your stuff and, and just go to town. If you wanted it to be a tankier build, like I said, you do less damage. Uh, it wouldn't be as fun, in my opinion. Uh, you certainly wouldn't be doing the Cornigan Smash power attack stuff. You'd be doing the um, weapon finessable type shit, Piranha Strike and blah, blah, blah still cool. It's not as cool. I probably wouldn't go cognitogen and if I did that. I'd probably go mutagen and go dex based. Which is fine. And honestly better because dex is you know, universal for your damage. It's universal for your armor. It's universal for your range damage. So again, or range attack, excuse me. So again, you have plenty of reasons to want dex. Um, so that's on you. I don't like it because I want to do something different. And again, I do like the strength like I said, for when shit wears off or, or I can't use sneak attack potential for whatever reason, or immune, or I just can't set it up, then I can just go to town and beat the shit out of them uh, with my power attack. And just to show you some attacking. I do what I must. So you can see my armor in action. And also...
Bark Skin, for instance. Yes, I can cast Bark Skin on myself. You see it right here. I, and I had it on myself a moment ago. But notice this one lasts longer. Why does it last longer? Because it's a potion form. Remember, I have extended potion. So once you get potions and you routinely use Bark Skin Potion, you don't have Bark Skin in your spell book. For instance, I would literally say, I don't need this anymore. Uh, you know, and same with Bull Strength. Once I get the, the Strength Belt, I would grab Bull Herb or I would grab Cure Spells or le more Lesser Restoration so I don't have to waste potions every time I take a knee. See what I'm saying? So again, Bark Skin early on is nice. When you have enough potions that you don't need to worry about it, you'll swap them out of your spell book because the potions really are better for you. That was easy. Thanks to Enhanced Potion and Extend Potion, they're, they're better versions of spells. I'm off. Uh, also, you can sneak attack, a those who don't task. know, with your Acid Flask and your Alchemist Flask. You can sneak attack with that shit, and that's just awesome. Um, that's pretty funny to me. And you can do uh, pre-buff up with you and your team and just go to town, obviously, is the way to go in most cases. Uh, like I said, if you want to go transformation to get that extra attack around and hit more often, that's awesome. Uh, obviously, buff up with haste and shield spell and all that other cool jazz first. Test of my abilities. Here we go. You go should have run. No, just to show you, attack on me, 44 armor, and I'm not done yet. I have a Ring of Deflection plus 2. If I had a Shield of Faith potion, I could have chugged it. That would have been a plus 5. Uh, and again, obviously, you once you get the Ring of Protection plus 5 or 6 or whatever, you don't need that potion anymore. But you can use the potions on your teammates because not everyone's getting that ring. So again, you are solid with this build. I have Shield Spell on me. I would cast it on my teammates. Same with Mage Armor. I'd have them drink the potion too. If they could benefit from it, give them the potion. You can be cheap. Don't use it every time you like it. Oh, God, we got an ambush. Oh, it was a Cobalt. Don't fucking buff up. Just kick his ass. But if it's a fight, and it's going to be a decent fight or a dungeon or a map that you want to explore, and you know it's going to probably be a fight or two or seven, and you have the potions, hey man, here, chug this. Hey buddy, drink that. Top everyone off with your healing uh, potions, and boom, boom, boom. You surprise how often you finish this game and you have like stockpiles of potions that you've never touched. Same with scrolls, you never use them because no one thinks of using them. This is your bread and butter. This is what you do better than anybody else is potion work and sneak attacks besides. So you're doing fine. Uh, remember, this is our uh, spell, Touch of Slime, just to point out the fact that if I didn't have Infusion, this would immediately cast it on myself. Because I have Infusion, it gives me the arrow where I can put it and push it on somebody. So if I want to, I can toxin someone. That's not because I wanted this. It's just to show you that I can. Um, same with, uh, of course, our elemental forms. Matter of fact, I can actually turn into, let's do, what, fire? Let's just be a jerk and turn ourselves into fire. Notice the sneak attack damage. Oh, the guy caught me with his little effect. This will be quick. Okay, there. Thank you. But just to show you this one, and to show you that I've transformed, notice that it's polymorph effect, and therefore it's stacked with alchemical effects, even though this is a penalty. If I had the mutagen, for example, on me, it would stack. If I have a belt of dexterity, it would stack, because that's an enhancement. So again, there's plenty of ways to buff your physical stats, too. This is just one of many ways. And I still have solid, solid armor class, because, again, I'm a monk doesn't matter that I lose my armor, quote-unquote, because I'm in this uh, elemental form. I have armor. I have charisma still. I have all my spell buffs on me. My rings and everything still works on me. Uh, mage armor potion still on me. The shield spell still on me. I get natural armor from being elemental. I have the cognitogen natural armor on me. I have bark skin spell still on me. I'm fighting defensively and, you know, monking it up with my um, crane style and blah, blah, blah. I'm doing fine. This is one of the few times where these forms are awesome. Because you are a monk. Capital monk. You really, really do good armor in these forms. So again, I hate to harp on the, the obvious here, but again, solid, solid build. Uh, you will have fun with it. Uh, I don't think it's the best build 
for a vivisectionist, but I still maintain it's a solid choice. I think it's fun. Uh, you'll definitely have fun beating the shit out of stuff with uh, the high strength stat that you have in most uh, any instance. Uh, the fact that you're going to constantly push your strength and your charisma through the roof means you're going to be a very intimidating and imposing character, hence the intimidating prowess. You have everything you need to make your character awesome. You just can't whoop out the damage like a like a caster can. But sneak attack loving, forget about it. Everybody's scared. Everybody's taking damage. The downside of this is we don't get multiple attacks in the round. Uh, whooping it up like a, a monk would. So, other than that, like I said, uh, just know what spells work on what characters. Uh, know if you really want infusion ahead of time. Like I said, I, I like mummification. I didn't on this build. It's just to show you the character and what he is capable of doing. Um, but again, once you come across those guys that are immune to sneak attack slash crit damage, the fact that you can power attack and just bludgeon the shit out of them is impressive. Uh, turn back. Turn back. things like, you know, transformation, like I said, when you really need to push it beyond its limits, haste before that, again, uh, make sure you have your heroism on your character, your best strength belt on, uh, you're gonna have a lot, a lot of fun with this character, I think, but with that, that's everything I wanted to show you, buddy, I hope this is what you was looking for, uh, I maintain that you're gonna have fun with it, uh, it's not, like I said, perfect, but uh, for what I wanted to do with it, I think it gets the job done, with that, my name is Brother Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.